Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today uh, showing some highlights from the One Hive Genesis versus Emphatic Fury War. This one, a very important win for One Hive Genesis. Not our best war, uh, probably not Emphatic Fury's best war either, um, but in this one, we pulled it out by one star, so uh, good job. Uh, regardless of a few hiccups uh, here and there, still got the job done. Uh, good job to our Town Hall 9s. Um, the difference you can see here is basically that Town Hall 11. Uh, if they had gotten that one two-star, they would have won the war. They had us on percentage. Um, as you can see here, they were... Yeah, they had us by a percent and a half there. So um, they were so close at the end here, attacking um, Mercer in the last minute couldn't get the base two starred um, even by, is that their number one? Or I mean, is that a Town Hall 11? Yeah, it looks like a Town Hall 11. Um, if he had two starred that base, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, if he had two starred that base, would have gotten them the win, it looks like, if I'm seeing this right. Um, although in the end here, a lot of other stuff happened. So um, we had a dip fail from us right at the end. So they didn't know that. They were going for three stars, I bet. I mean, so many attacks in that last minute. Um, yeah, so much going on. It was crazy. So um, they they had no way of knowing that, hey, if I get the two star, uh, the number four guy, I'm going to win. So um, crazy ending. Let's go ahead and take a look at those replays though that I was talking about. Starting with base number two, I believe this is uh, Puka. I think is how you say that because uh, Puka sounds a little gross. So uh, we'll go with Puka. Um, Dropping down some loons, take out the warden. Uh, all the Town Hall 11 bases didn't get any of them fresh, but we were 4 for 10, which is very solid. Um, you guys saw one of my fails in the live attack, but 4 for 10, not bad. This one, I think, took... This base, I think, took two attacks to be two-starred, so I believe this is the second attack on it. Maybe the third, though. Not sure. Um, few loons, get a few of those defenses taken out um, with the haste there. Then the golem bowlers backing it up. Uh, this is probably a base that is somewhat common, a layout like this. You have the Infernos um, in separate compartments there, the Town Hall with that gap, so it's hard for the Queen to snipe it from either side, really. Um, yeah, pretty standard base layout that you see these days. Um, so anyway, it gets a good chunk of the base taken out, um, basically for either side of the funnel there. I would have liked to see a few minions up here to... Uh, to get the, uh, th those building buildings taken out. I believe he did not get the CC lure. Um, let's go ahead and fast forward, because I think this might have been a little bit of adapting going on here, because uh, I believe it's a Hound Loon CC, and he might have been trying to get that uh, with his with his uh, little kill squad he sent in right there. Uh, so he goes ahead and sends everything in. His queen is going to shoot the hound, but everything else is going forward. Pops the king's ability right here, and the king is on the town hall. He'll finish it off. Already at about 46%, still has the queen's ability. Um, still a baby dragon kind of hanging out in there. Not sure how it got that far into the base, um, but right here it will go down. Pops the queen uh, right here. I think his queen might get another building or two before she goes down. Yeah, she'll, she'll snag that Tesla and that air sweeper, so... Uh, that'll do it, 54%, I think two archers somewhere, uh, take out one more building, or not, no, it is 53%. Okay, so nice stuff to Puka, I think that was a, a, a good adjustment, because I believe he missed the CC lure, uh, but was able to adapt. Now we have, let's go ahead and show the one attack of theirs I'm going to show, because uh, I, I always like to show the opponent's attacks if they have some good highlights. Um, which base was it now? Uh, this guy had uh, six star war, so nice job to the number nine. Uh, Rucko. Let's take a look at his attack on Devin. Um, interesting attack. Three golems, uh, ten kind of like back end loons. So a very heavy golem, uh, heavy bowler kill squad. Um, the vast majority of his army camp space is being spent in the kill squad. And then just a, uh, a relatively small uh, amount of loons. I don't even think he has Lava Hound. I believe there's CC bowlers in there. So look how wide he's starting this. Um, starting out with a golem pretty much on either side of the base, uh, wizard to back it up on the bottom, just a bowler to bowler bounce that air defense cannon area, good trade there up top, and then everything's going to kind of meet up in, uh, at the top left of the base. So very good base identification to, to start out wide, notice that the golems are going to go ahead and reroute back inside the base, and, um, 
Uh, right here, the Lava Hound is going to pop. There's like six wizards on it, um, but the poison's down. The pups will die relatively quickly, and I think pretty much all the golems or whatever's left of the golems are going into the base. The wizards actually opened up a wall by shooting the Lava Hound, it looks like. That's kind of interesting, the splash damage there. Uh, that heal spell, not sure how much value he got from that, just because the Infernos probably blocked most of the heal there. Um, so that might have been better spent as another spell somewhere else in the attack. Um, but pretty much getting this entire base taken out besides that very back end. And then right there has the haste. He'll just haste those two groups of loons into the archer towers. Uh, I think they move up to the wizard towers but don't quite get them taken out. Although he has a few extra loons still left to deploy. But at this point when it's just one wizard tower left up and then all cannons and mortars. And you have a few loons and a baby dragon. You know it's going to be over because they can't. Um, nothing can hurt those loons. Nothing can hurt that baby dragon. So the queen will die here. Um, I think to that mortar shell, to that yeah, to the cannon there. Uh, but he has those air troops, which um, which are going to be able to finish off the rest of the base. So good attack. Um, one of my favorite attacks, probably my favorite attack from this war, I'd have to say. Um, even though it was on one of our bases, good stuff there. Good base identification. Um, Let's take a look at the one 10v10 we had. Now, they had two 10v10s. Uh, we only had one. Um, we had a 99% on another base. We actually, I think the... Um one of like the, the second attack on the base got 99%, then like two or three following attacks uh, for some reason could not finish it off. So that always is kind of frustrating. Uh, but this was one of the, uh, or the only three star we got at Town Hall 10, and it proved to be very important. Uh, one thing that did hurt them were the dip fails. Um, I believe they had two or three dip fails, maybe just two. I know they failed on my base um, and possibly one or two others. So... Uh, we were a little bit better on dips, which was a big difference maker in this war. So anyway, this is Dao taking on number 14 here. Um, always a little bit easier to three-star one of these low-level Town Hall 10s uh, that has level 2 Infernos. A lot of the Town Hall 9 point defense, although some of the Archer Towers, Wizard Towers are upgraded. So just wall breaks the queen in. Um, nice funnel, king on one side, some loons on the other, making sure the queen takes out that inferno. That's the most important part. Then she's actually going to leave the base, go out, and get a wizard tower as well. So great value. She will continue to do some work as she uh, as she makes her way around. I think, yeah, because the king got that town hall so low that she one-shots it, then takes out the cannon, then comes up and takes out that air defense uh, so the loons don't even have to stop at that first air defense. Not a huge deal, but uh, she will even start cleanup right here. Um, so great value from that queen. She's going to go on a monster walk. She's not even done yet. Uh, poisons the CC. It has a wizard in it as it comes out. Has the poison on the queen as well. Skelly spell. I think some loons got drops on her, which is what killed her. But the skelly spell was also there just in case. Queen still doing cleanup, uh, hasting these loons through the base. Has one heal spell right for when the Inferno Tower goes down to heal them over that last Wizard Tower and a few defenses on the back end. So here's the heal um, about to go down. I think the heal is a little bit late, um, but gets at least like three or four loons healed initially. Then the rest will eventually make their way to that area. Um, I think maybe a few of them get in that heal. So a ton of loons left up at the end here. Queen is still alive. Um, imagine that in the planning. Uh, if you told him his queen was going to survive the entire attack, I that would be a weird thing to, to be told when you're doing a suicide queen for one of the Infernos. But it happens, and she will help with cleanup. She probably got a solid 30-40% uh, of the base taken out on her own just in this entire walk around, around like three quarters of the base. So crazy stuff. Two very nice 10v10s from this war. Had to show them. They had one other 10v10 uh, from that same guy that I didn't show, but it was a nice attack as well. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at two Town Hall 9s, 21 and 22. This first one, I liked it because it was using a P.E.K.K.A. in the CC, which is something that uh, we don't see that often, but the P.E.K.K.A. is effective because... It has the tankiness of the golem. It's not going to die very easily. It's good at taking out heroes. Um, more reliable in some senses than bowlers are because uh, 
It's not going to get taken out by giant bombs. They're much more sturdy than other DPS troops you can put behind your golems. Uh, these are both fresh attacks. I wanted to make sure I showed some fresh attacks because once you know where the traps are, it becomes uh, significantly easier to three-star a Town Hall 9. And I think it's uh, better help to you guys to show these fresh attacks, see how the original plans go. So um, heroes go in, uh, that one golem did walk, it'll lure the CC and it will trigger a giant bomb. So actually that golem uh, didn't wasn't a total waste, it still tanked for a while, for the funnel at least, and then uh, triggered the, the uh, CC and the giant bomb. So that was good. And um, heroes moving in, the queen finally finishes off the baby dragon in the CC. Like I said, that P.E.K.K.A. walk up, take out the queen, um, that's clutch. You, you, you cannot have that queen still up. And it'll also tank for his own queen for a while uh, to let her get more value. Here come the hogs, though, has three heals. I like not raging. Uh, the rage on the P.E.K.K.A. is not that important because it already does so much damage. Raged bowlers are typically going to be uh, more important. So bringing the P.E.K.K.A. in a way allows you to bring an extra heal spell for your hogs. And with all these giant bombs and stuff, definitely is important to have that last uh, heal spell for the cannons, for the Tesla, uh, but this base is crushed, still has two hogs he hasn't even deployed. Nice attack to Ollie. We'll fast forward to the end here because he's going to drop that last heal over the Teslas. Even if the giant bomb was still there, would have been fine. Uh, troll Tesla in the corner. I think he, um, that's why on a fresh attack, you always, especially if you're crushing the base and time might be an issue, save a hog or two, um, probably two, and if you just, Try to check the corners. It's, I know it's difficult to do, but um, if you if there's a Tesla unaccounted for, see if you can uh, find it in the corner there. Drop the hogs because it will it'll ruin your cleanup oftentimes if you have to have your hogs run from one side of the base to the other to finish off the last defense, and they'll start clean up on the wrong side. Your wizards will be on the on like the same side as your hogs, which is never a good idea. So uh, keep an eye out for that on fresh attacks because we see troll Teslas. Um, very often, at least in the wars I'm in. So this last one here is a, um, a La Luna attack, two golems, a few Valks even, um, so a relatively big kill squad, bunch of wizards behind as usual, and has a jump spell to get in there, get the queen, and get two air defenses taken out. Then it's just going to be a La Luna on the back end of the base. Small CC, so it drops the poison on it, has two poisons. Um, I think the the, the two poisons are just to ensure the witch dies because the witch has some weird AI where she walks out of the poison like every like I think she targets a troop then when it dies she walks like back away from the the troops to get out of the poison or something and then sometimes she'll walk back towards the troops so she's just kind of weird and you don't want to risk it um, so if it is a fresh attack, so I guess he didn't know that there was going to be a witch in the CC, but if he did know, the double poison was a good idea, and also when you have two heroes plus a CC, it's a good idea to have both those poisons, even if it, even if you could bring an extra haste and one less poison, um, I think this was a good decision, uh, even being a fresh attack. So that king is going to tank for a while, he just kind of got stuck on a wall, but he tanked that Tesla uh, for quite a while, and here come the loons with the hastes has a rage and a heal as well. Pretty good deployment. The loon's kind of just uh, targeting all these defenses at once here. A few golemites still working somehow. Uh, that's pretty crazy. And then right towards the end here, has the rage heal combo for the sweeper expo uh, wizard tower area. Rage is first to get them over the sweeper, then he'll heal at the end here. You typically don't want to rage and heal over the same area because the rage propels the loons out of the heal, which is almost a bad thing for you. So heal when the loons are going slowly, that way they spend more time in the heal. Rage over a different part of the attack where they're not being healed. A uh, ton of loons left up at the end, nice hit. <clears throat> that will do it for the video. Thanks for watching. I will get those Patreon perks out as soon as possible. I've done most of the perks, but the video perks um, being the uh, expert interview and the base review and the base building questions going to be coming out very soon. Sorry for the delay, um, but that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.